Hi, my name is Karina and welcome to the Karina Chronicles. Today I'm going to reflect on my 2022 predictions, see what actually happened and also do some new predictions for 2023. And I have plans. <laughs> So last year I obviously just started my channel and did some predictions for this year. I categorized them in my personal life, my YouTube channel and just reading and books. And well, there were some interesting things in there that I didn't remember saying and didn't exactly happen. Some things actually did happen or even, you know, surpassed. And I have quite some plans for 2023. So they're predictions in some way. I mean, like I plan them, so I hope they do happen because otherwise something happened with my plans. <laughs> but I think they will happen. And I'm going to tell you all about them. So I'm really excited. I'm going to categorize them the same as last year. And we're going to start with my personal life. So I actually rewatched my video of 2021 predicting 2022. Uh, it was long and I can also tell you why, because I, for some reason, talked for like 10 minutes about the books I thought I was not going to read, which wasn't even the plan. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit faster. And for that, I have a list here. So if you see me, look, the list is there on my laptop of the things I predicted in 2022. Starting with my personal life, I thought that I wouldn't be working at the same place anymore because I hoped that COVID-19 wouldn't be as prevalent in our lives anymore or as present in our lives anymore. And um, that therefore my job wouldn't be necessary anymore, which is actually true. It still is here and there are still some measurements, but my job indeed wasn't necessary anymore. And in May, therefore I needed to look for another job because my job would end. It was actually quite chill in some way because um, the job finished quite abruptly, uh, but they needed to pay me for a while. So I actually was doing nothing and still getting paid. It was a very sh short amount of time, but that made for me an easy period to actually look for a job. I had a lot of time to look for a job. And that ended up in working at a bookstore, <laughs> which is something I've always wanted to do, but um, it's more popular than you might think. And there are only like that many spots available because there are only that many bookstores. So I was very lucky. I actually applied for a job, which I didn't get, but they were so enthusiastic. I didn't get it because they thought I was too ambitious. And it was only for a few hours and they were like, well, if you get something better somewhere, you're gone again. And we need someone to actually be there for our team. Uh, but they called me back the next day and they were like, okay, but um, in another department of our same store, we have a full-time job. Would you like that one? <laughs> Which, um, well, I didn't expect. I now work in a different city than where I live, but it's close enough to still cycle to work. Um, which also made a big difference for my life because uh, the cycling and also playing soccer again, which I started doing, um, made me a lot more sportive. <laughs> so I uh, lost some weight, I gained some uh, condition and some muscles. <laughs> and I feel a lot more healthy now without doing anything about my diet or something, but just... Um, well, doing a lot more with my body. Also the standing, because in the bookstore you don't sit <laughs> behind the desk. You just stand and walk the whole day. It really helped and um, I feel great now. I predict that I will be working at the same place next year. I hope so. Uh, although my contract does end again in May, but they can prolong it. And I think they will. Uh, there are some things that are not really great in my contract. So I am going to have that talk in May if they want to prolong it. And that could well be uh, 
not so helpful. <laughs> but I still think they want to keep me. I hope so. I really do want to stay there at least for a while. I also really like that I am settled there now. I wouldn't want to change it uh, that soon again. So I think I will be working at the same spot next year. Uh, and therefore also live at the same house. I think my boyfriend is finished with what he is doing with his current job that is like a project so will be finished uh, someday that will take like another one and a half years or something so before that happens nothing about our situation will probably change very much uh, so I think we will be living at the same house otherwise I would be really surprised I think we will still have a relationship because everything is great <laughs> and um, well maybe be engaged or something that's so weird to actually speak out about but well that would be nice um also something that i predicted last year was finishing my first version of my book and also <laughs> sent it to my beta readers which um didn't happen i wrote uh, in february quite a lot i finished a new version like 0 0.2 or 3 <laughs> I finished well great but that is still not version one and uh, I should have made more time I told a lot of people about my book actually because a lot of people ask about it now I work in a bookstore they're like oh were you always this interested in books and then I'm like well actually I also wrote a book so a lot of people are waiting for it I would have a market to sell a book but I just don't have the book yet it really needs to happen it really needs to happen I don't want to put pressure on myself, but I promised two people that I don't see that often uh, that asked about the book that the next time we would meet, I would have finished the first version. <laughs> so, because I honestly think that it will take only two more days or something. I literally did that many things in February. It is very close to being finished, but didn't take the time. Also didn't participate in NaNoWriMo. I don't think I will be doing that next year either because if I still work at a bookstore that is a very peak time in our working schedule not a time you want to say to yourself okay but I'm also writing 2000 words a day that doesn't work so I think NaNoWriMo won't be for me but I am planning on um, taking some time off especially for writing and um, I think that will be around April, May. Well, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. It really depends on my schedule, but I'm taking some time off, especially for writing. So, Karina, we're doing that. I hope to have a better balance in my personal life this year. Um, the job was actually a very big surprise. I work a lot more hours than I planned on doing so, but because I love it so much, it is fine, but the balance is um, hard to find still. Very hard to find. Uh, I'm filming this at 1am, which is the best example. I have to admit that this is a weird time because everyone is free, but I still have to work. so. You make a lot of plans with friends that are free, so there's no room left for filming, which is why I'm filming this at 1 a.m. while I work tomorrow. Um, the balance isn't that well. I need to balance it more. Uh, this year I had a free day on Wednesday, which made for it for me very easy to film videos very last minute. And that's of course nice, but that makes uh, like rush and if something happens you're not in time with uploading next year i have my free day once in two weeks on thursday so that means that i need to plan ahead and i think that will actually help me out because then i can film some videos in one day because well i'm not in a rush to finish the video for that day i'll just be able to finish the video for the next wednesday there is no rush uh, on Thursdays I also mostly have no things in the evening so if it then doesn't work out I have the evening to finish it so I think I can like fully focus this Thursday on making one two maybe three videos and that that will actually help me to get some balance so I really hope that 
And then talking about my YouTube channel, I do actually still have a YouTube channel and I'm obviously very happy about it, but um, I also don't think that light about it anymore. It takes a lot of time and I really, really enjoy it and I'm happy that's still the case. Because last year I was like, well, I just started this, of course I'm still doing it next year, but I love my own commitment to this. I have posted two videos every week and two videos extra in the month for the whole year, which is, I think, quite an achievement. There were some moments that everything broke down and I couldn't publish it on the right day, but in the end, all the videos were uploaded and there has not been one day that I skipped, so love that. Um, I wanted to reach 150 subscribers. I did so in, I think, November or October, but then things went downhill suddenly and I lost a lot. So I actually thought, oh, I'm not going to make this. Well, last year I really thought that I would. Um, but at the moment I'm at 165. So I actually did reach 150 subscribers and I surpassed it by quite a lot which I really like. I do think some people might leave because they just arrived for my giveaway, my Christmas giveaway that I did. But uh, overall, I uh, do have a decent amount of subscribers that are always here and comment on my videos, which I really enjoy. I am going to say that I want to reach next year the amount of 250 subscribers, which is a goal I know I might not reach and I will be okay with that. It's just I want to set set the bar a little bit higher uh, because if I ever want to reach an amount that really, uh, for example, would make me some money or give me some sponsors or something, then these small steps need to get a little bit bigger. So I'm going to try this, but I know that you also are a little bit dependent on the algorithm and on some luck. But I'm going to try to reach 250 subscribers uh, by the end of next year. I did go again to Young Adult Festival and I also went to some other event, but I don't even remember. Well, at least I went to some bookstores and made some reading vlogs about all those things. I know that in February I will go to another Young Adult Festival that my bookstore will organize. So that is really interesting. That will be a new one that I'm excited about to show you. And um, I think there will be more things. I might go to the... Uh, oh, I also went to the book market. That's what I went to. And I might go there as well this year. So we'll see. There will be some events where I'll be going. <laughs> Um, I said TikTok would still be a big thing, but not. I wouldn't do that much at it. That is true, but my follower account keeps going up there because I once in a while post a video there. It's very big and I do like to make TikToks, but I do see what the trends are, but don't really like following it. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't think I will be tempted to really go on TikTok, but you never know. You never know. Um, my uploading schedule is still the same. Uh, so on Wednesdays and Saturdays and on the first and last of the month. And I will keep it that way. I like it. I hope you do too. Let me know down in the comments if you think this is a nice time, because if everyone thinks it should be a different time, then I should know. <laughs> I did ask people once in a story and not that many replied, but the people that replied all said that it was great like this. And then for books, well, uh, I think I'm not going to get to 50 books this year, which is so weird because I had the best reading year. I had some months where I actually read eight books and that never happened before, but it was really going in waves. It was really going up and down. I also had months where I finished two or even only one book um, and that also never happened. And in the end, I literally thought in November that I could not only reach 50 books, but surpass it to finish 
also the books that I a few years ago didn't finish to get to 50 so that would now be like an how do you say that an even amount of books that I want well complicated story but I thought that I would be able to finish 63 books which was my kind of goal no never mind I don't even get to finish 50 I do have to admit if I would be like um or I really want to reach this goal. I have like five books that are between 50 and 100 pages. Um, I would be able to finish those and I would finish my reading goal. Uh, but instead of that, I'm reading A Dance with Dragons by George R. R. Martin, which is 1051 pages. So I can't really say that I care that much about the reading challenge. I just read what I want to read. <laughs> But uh, so that makes me a little bit more happy. I think I will finish what it is. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure what I'm at right now. I think I'm at uh, 34 books in Goodreads. So that's plus 13. So that is 47. I am at 46 or 47 books and I will finish one more. So um, we'll be a few book, books short of 50, but enough to give you some stats in my next video. Uh, I will finish 50 books again next year and I will really try to let it be a little bit more because I now know that I can easily read like seven or eight books in a month. It's no problem for me. I really like it even. Uh, I took up reading a lot more again. Um, it's just that at the moments that my job is at its peak, I should um, maybe prioritize reading a little bit more. I forgot to do that now. I also felt like, oh, I will be all right. And I also got in a big reading slump in November because of a stupid book. So I think that really knocked me down. Uh, I'll try to not do that next year. Um, and talking about that, uh, there were a few more things about books that I wanted to say before I go to like my predictions for 2023. I'm still a member of all the books, book clubs. They all still exist, but they are very not frequent, which I don't mind. Uh, there's one that is every two months and the others are just random. And um, I think we read like three or four books for each of them this year. Completely fine by me. I do have a new bookcase. It looks the same as the first one and it's built next to it. So it's incredibly pretty. I think that is my, like my biggest reward of this year. This bookcase is incredible. I also get so many compliments on it, but really it's my boyfriend that made this. I'm just the happy person that can fill it with my books. So yeah, really, really happy with that. And um, well, Talking about that I uh, got in an extreme reading slump, I have some plans to go with my books and choosing the books, picking the books to read a little bit differently next year. I always have been very strict on myself with which books I read when. I have like a fixed TBR, an ordered TBR, and I just read the next book that's on there. And then I allow myself up to three books in between um, that could be kind of random. So with a book club book or a review copies, I put them all in those three books. And then, well, eventually I get somewhere. But that means that some books that I own already that I'm really looking forward to uh, are like somewhere on the list on place 210. Which literally means that it will take me more than four years to get to it. And um, I don't mind. I really like this way of reading because uh, I take, I know it's weird, but I get a lot of joy out of looking forward to the books and like suffering a little bit before you get to them. So being like, oh, I am looking forward to these two books, but that book is really cool. And after these two books, I can finally read that one. It, I know it is weird, but it really helps me. Um, but I do want to have a little bit more of a mood specific 
thing. So I have four things that I'm going to change next year to have a little bit of a more random books in there. The first thing that I am going to do is buddy reads. This year I for the first time had a real buddy read. It was with The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue, which I actually gave five stars to. And I had so much fun reading 100 pages every week for the month of, was it September or October? I don't remember, but uh, for every month I read one, uh, for every week in that month I read 100 pages and then we uh, texted each other with a big essay about what we thought of those 100 pages and I loved it. So um, I was also really happy that I finally got to that book because it was a five-star prediction, but I I really didn't get to it because it was somewhere down on my TBR. So this was a great way to get it up and to actually read it. I already decided on two more buddy reads. Uh, people will actually already agree to that. I don't know which month yet, but there will be two buddy reads next year. Um, and um, might even be more. If you want to do a buddy read with me, comment down below. Uh, Preferably a book that is already on my physical TBR because if I need to buy another book for it, then it is kind of not the point. <laughs> so uh, if you want to do a better read with me, let me know. There are quite some slots left, I would say. And I'm really looking forward to that. Also, last year I for the first time read a completely random book that a friend bought for me. And then I bought one for her and we decided to read it immediately. And that was also a five star. That was The Bone Shard Daughter. Um, so I really want to read some books that I am excited about uh, and talk about it with people a little bit more. So the Butter Reads are going to help for that. I already have two, so at least I know it's going to do something. Then what I'm also planning on doing is uh, reading vlogs where I read all the books um, that close friends and family recommended to me as their favorite book of all time. Um, I had that asked and I collected 12 books in that way. Well, I up till here collected nine, there are three to come. But um, there are 12 books, I already bought them immediately. Um, and I am going to read them all and make vlogs out of it. And I also think this will change up my reading a little bit and might give me some five stars in there. Because people are close to me. We have the kind of the same taste of reading and it's those are the, their favorite books of all time. So I've read one of them already and that was a five star. <laughs> so I think this is going to help my reading and not get it in a reading slump as well. Uh, really excited about it. I know it's a little bit ambitious because I need uh, to read 11 more. And I only read like 50 books per year. So that is at least... <laughs> 20% of my reading. So I know it's quite a lot, but I do think there will be quite some high ratings in there. So excited about that as well. I also have a little bit more secret project where I will read one semi-random book per month. This will be starting from March because then my own zodiac sign book tag that I started in March of 2022 uh, will be finished and I'm not going to do it again. I did it then for a whole year. So I have a new plan, a new kind of tag that I will then do every month. And for that one, I will not only recommend books, but I will actually read one in like a little kind of vlog setting in those tags. And um, those books will be, uh, there will be a selection, but from that selection, I can choose Whichever I'm in the mood for, uh, the book that I'm going to read for that video. So that will give me like 12 more books. Well, starting from March, so it's not 12, it's actually... Uh, it's end of March, so 9, 10-ish books that I will also try to read, um, which are just what I'm in the mood for at the moment. So I think that might help with some good ratings and not getting in a reading slump as well. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, I will do just like last year, a phys physical TBR video, which is, oh my God, I don't know where I find the time, but I will do it again. And um, 
while doing that, I will put the books that I still need to read that are suitable. So not like the fourth part in the series or actually also not the first part if I own the whole series because then I get stressed out like I need to read all of them. And some books that are already in other challenges, those are all not suitable. But the books that are suitable, so those will be like 80 or 100 books, I guess. Maybe even more, I have no idea. And I will put them a little bit in front of the rest. And my boyfriend is going to put them back. But choose three books that are this way and wrap them for me. So I won't know which books these are. And then in February, around um, the Valentine's Day, actually, as a reminder of him, <laughs> because he is actually on a holiday then, and I am not, I am going to do a 24 hour reading challenge where I will try to, uh, well, I will do this the whole week, a reading vlog of a whole week with a 24 hour reading challenge in between. I will try to finish three books that week, three read books, so I have no clue what they are. They are read by my boyfriend and I will just unread them and read them. And uh, in that way I have like four different ways to read a little bit more random and mood related and I think that will help me with get my ratings up uh, and therefore also with not getting in a reading slump. So I hope that actually works and I hope you're excited because I am. There are a lot of projects in here. <laughs> So now it's actually time to look back at the five star predictions I did in 2022. I will go through it quite quickly. There were seven. I ended up reading uh, four. Uh, and not everything was five stars, unfortunately. The novice was four stars. I liked it, but just not a five star. It wasn't perfect. At Heart van de Adelaar, also four stars, not perfect, but loved it as well. It was not a big disappointment or anything. Uh, the Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue was actually a five star. It started with being a four star, so I was afraid it was again not going to happen. But starting from the middle, it was just very good. So five star as well. And A Dance with Dragons, which at the moment I haven't finished yet. I, it could be a four star, but I don't think so. I still think it will be a five star. Also, the way I keep thinking about this book and keep telling everyone this is my favorite series and it it is so big, but I never like, uh, I never feel like I must read it. I just feel like, yes, I want to read this. I'm going to continue now. So five star, I think so. Still, I'm counting it as success. It was a five star. Then there are three books uh, of which I'm going to take two in my next uh, five star predictions because I haven't read them yet. And one I'm going to drop. The one that I'm going to drop is The Rosie Project because uh, I said I'm going to reread this and last time I rated it five stars so it probably will be five stars again. But I found out that last time I rated it as four stars and I'm also not really excited about it anymore. I don't know why. I am still going to reread it, but probably not next year. And uh, then it will also probably be still four stars or maybe five stars, but it's not suitable in this video. So I am leaving it out now. And the two that I am just keeping because I do think I will read them next year and will give them five stars are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Skyward by Brendan Sanderson. So I am going to read those two books next year and I still think they're going to be five stars. So five star predictions. Then two books that are quite random that I also think I'm going to give five stars to, which I already know I will read because I always read the books of the Young Adult Festival like the next year. Uh, and two books that I'm going to read for that are uh, As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow which I really think I'm going to give five stars to. So it's in here. And um, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, which I actually got as a surprise by a subscriber, which is really nice. And I also think that is going to be a five star. So I'm going to read those both next year. I'm absolutely certain of it. 
unless I only read like 20 books next year, then not. But <laughs> if I'm just going to read like the books that I plan on reading next year, then uh, these ones are in there. And then for the other six books that I um, think are going to be five stars, I'll take you upstairs again to my bookshelves. Uh, so there are 10 in total. So as I got this big bookcase this year, uh, all my bookshelves are actually empty, but these two still exist because they are kind of my nightstand with a lot of books. So this upper shelf is with the books that I plan on reading like literally next <laughs> and they are in order as well. So this is just the next book that I'm going to read and then that one and well there are not many books going in between this. Sometimes it happens when I have a book club book that it's like okay this I need to prioritize this so it moves ahead a bit but these are the books that I'm going to read next. <laughs> and um, the sad thing is that there's no five star prediction on here. So I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not starting the year, year great, <laughs> probably. And um, maybe I should change that. But well, no five star predictions. I do have some five star predictions on this shelf though. These are books that I um, just, well, put on the higher shelf when I have some space. <laughs> and then I usually work from this side on. <laughs> to the right um, but there these books are all either in projects or on an other way on my tbr so i plan on reading all of these in 2023 so actually with that shelf as well you already know quite some books that i'm going to read in 2023 but there are six more five star predictions on the shelf the first one being loveless by alice oseman the favorite book of my sister which is really, really nice. I think I'm going to give that one five stars. Then we skip ahead and then we get to Galatea by Madeline Miller. And Song of Achilles was my favorite read of 2021. And Cersei is maybe going to be my favorite read of 2022, at least place one or two. So I have one book left by her, a very small one. And I think it's going to be a five stars again. Um, then we have uh, The Boy, The Mole, the fox and the horse which is incredible it will be a read of like half an hour or something but um it will be five stars i guess ray bearer a book that i have been wanting to read forever uh, but i still think it could be five stars so we'll see the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde i also really hope that will be five stars it's a classic i really wanted to read and it's a favorite of one of my friends and then we have Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief in a beautiful edition that I also think will be five stars, even though I rated it four stars at first. But I think I've come to love Greek mythology even more. So I think it might be a five star now. So this is six, right? Loveless, Galatea, uh, The Boy, Ray Bearer, Picture of the Ring Grey, and Percy Jackson. So yes, six more books. So that is actually it for this video. I really hope you liked it. I hope my predictions and goals will come true and that next year I won't be there like, Kalina, you still didn't do it. <laughs> Let me know what your goals are. Do you have like any wishes for 2023 to happen? I would really like to know. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell, you will be notified whenever I post a new video. I hope you'll have a lovely day filled with books and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. I loved making this video. Do you find it interesting to see some predictions? And are you looking forward for me looking back on 2022? Because this, this, this sixth video is also going to be awesome. Thank you.